Let's get more now. Let's speak to oncologist Professor Carol Sikora, the former chief of the World Health Organization's cancer program. Good morning to you. I mean, worrying is not the word, is it? I mean, this research, um, pretty shocking. Is it a surprise to you? No. Uh, um, this is a study in 61 different countries, a large number of people, 6,000 in the UK, so it's very relevant to our NHS. And the problem in, in the, the paper, it stresses the lockdown. I don't think it's the lockdown as such. It's the overwhelming or the fear of overwhelming healthcare systems that really drives cancellation. We've seen it here. People had all sorts of things cancelled, diagnostic tests, operations, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, and it's detailed in the paper. And it's really sad indictment that we switched everything to COVID. And ironically, we've done worse than most other countries, including poor countries, because of this obsession with treating elderly COVID patients at the expense of younger cancer patients. And I've been lobbying for let's not do this again. And I'm glad to see that's the conclusion of the paper. God. The reality is, though, these resources are stretched beyond their capacity. So what are some of the solutions? How do those people who desperately need those operations get looked after? Uh, that, a, an excellent question. Um, surgery is usually the way into cancer. You have to take a biopsy, a sample of the tumour. That involves surgery. So delaying surgery delays the whole treatment of cancer. What we have to do and what the paper suggests is sort of putting a ring around things like cancer and heart disease, not to allow that to get slower. You know, it's sad that what's happened with COVID, we, you know, you know the waiting list is something like 5.6 million people now. Most of those won't have cancer, thank goodness, but some of them will, and they're in a waiting list, and they won't know they've got cancer until that waiting list has got through. And the, the, the doom mongers say it's going to take 10 years to clear it. We can do it a lot faster if we put the same effort into dealing with heart disease and cancer as we've done into COVID over the last two years, we could really motor through that waiting list. And it could be an imaginative way forward, bringing the public, the private sector together just to clear the backlog and get started again on a new NHS. And as we go forward, obviously, we're going into to the winter and we, we hope that we won't be going into any form of lockdown again or whatever. But have we learnt from this going forward? I mean, do you, do you think that, that that is a process that we're now uh, um, sort of able to, to help with? I think so. We have learnt with COVID. It was a bit of a shock and it was unplanned, despite the fact that a, a planning exercise in 2016 by our NHS uh, showed that we would fail. And indeed, we sort of did fail. We didn't ring fence cancer surgery and, and heart disease and other strokes and so on. Uh, we've got to have better planning for the future. And we've got to have better organisation of the NHS. Sure, it needs a bit more money, but more important than money, it needs reorganisation. It needs to be responsive to what people want. It has to be consumer friendly. You have to be able to get into it. There's no point having to wait six weeks to see your GP if you've got worrying symptoms. Uh, we've got to change all that. And I think that's the lesson. The NHS is going to have a review. Uh, whether it's the right type of review, I don't know. You know, I'm such an old consultant. I've been through 23 reviews of the NHS. And this one that's going to report in February, I, I'm not sure what it's going to say. But we do need to change things. We need to change the way we deliver healthcare in this country. Mm. Well, they need to change, don't they? And, and you mentioned earlier, which is so frightening, it just stuck up massively in our, our heads here, uh, about the fact that we, we these figures are lower... Uh, are worse, sorry, than other countries. I mean, we shouldn't be in that place, should we? Um, are they listening to you? You've been lobbying for years, you said. Um, wh why is the focus still, as you said, why was it on elderly people with COVID? Why, why, are, we, why are they not listening? I, I think it caught everyone unawares. The speed of the whole thing caught the 23rd. I'll never forget being out at a dinner party on the 23rd uh, of March last year. And suddenly the place was in lockdown. And, uh, you know, Boris was very serious all about it. And no one gave a thought to the NHS on how we would deal with everything else. You know, if you need to have your hip replaced, 
And you can put that off for six months. Oh, sure, it's unpleasant. You have to limp around. You have to take painkillers. But at least you're going to be alive. If you have cancer, you haven't got six months before you treat it. Otherwise, you'll die. So it's important that for the future, we actually prioritize certain things that we're going to continue with. The other problem for hospitals, they had no idea how long and how bad it was going to be. The predictions from the Room mongers at Imperial College with there were 500,000 deaths and so on. That never happened. Uh, and thank goodness. And so we should have spent more time on the younger curable patients than the elderly, essentially multi-organ failure patients that were clogging up the ICUs and therefore blocking operations for cancer. I mean, it's horrible terminology there, even, you know, clogging up ICUs, but that is the reality, reality. of what's happened. Yeah.